Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Just following up quickly on a video I made yesterday on making a lozenge or pill shape. Uh, this time I've looked at making one on a compound curved face. So this is a, a sweep, but it's a I guess it's a face of revolution. The path and the section are arcs. So yeah, here's a result. This is a uh, what I've called offset centre. So in this case, if you have sections through the middle here, this section here uh, through the middle basically tracks the, uh, the edge here and the thickness is consistent. And I've created a second version as well, which is variable through the middle here. So if we section through here and have a look, so you can see they're much more consistent from end to end with no sort of offset equal thickness area in the middle. And so you actually end up with quite a different result there. So I've opened both windows side by side. You can see this one over here, which is the offset, and this one here, which is sort of consistent uh, through the middle. Quite a different result, especially if you turn on the zebra stripes. Um, sort of a straight through here. So I guess it depends on what you want as far as the designer, what you what your uh, design and tenders both built in a fairly similar fashion i might just roll through let's go through this one i'm going to roll through this really quickly so i've created a sweep surface which as i said is a path and a section then i've got my plan control i've decided that this is going to be projected uh versus trying to create some kind of true length thing on the uh on the curved face so I did check what a projection deviation would be like if you were to wrap this down with an arc and the deviation, which is the red here, 0.02 millimeters. So I thought it's not worth doing. So it's projected result. Okay, and then I've got my outer slot profile, which if you watch my other video, which I'll link in in the description, that explains this uh, G3 connection here using a section of arc on one end in a line and then connected with a degree seven spline and controlled with these uh, angles here to give us some relief. Then that's extruded and I've created a 3D sketch where that extrude intersects with this sweep surface. And then I've created a surface which is an offset and that offset is 0.25 millimeters. So that's my chamfer height. And I then created this sketch here which is my external chamfer and that runs into my arc through the middle here. Okay, then I have created a revolve. So I'm going to say this section here is a revolve and that, that revolves around the center, the path down here. So the center of the path for the sweep. And then I've created a plane which terminates at the end of my 3D sketch, which is my intersection of the G3 curve here. And then trim back that. So this is, that plane is basically uh, revolving around this axis down here. Okay, then I've created the inner profile on the top plane, which is built in the same way as the outer profile. And again, I've extruded that and then intersected that with my offset here, which is the surface offset chamfer height to give me my inner profile. So I've mirrored this over, knitted that together, got a section down the middle again, same as yesterday, boundary surface, knitted that together, trimmed it out to make a four-sided boundary then added a boundary surface, knit it all together and did some mirroring and what have you to make it into a solid. Okay, so that's that result there with this consistent thickness through the middle. I'll skip over to the other one now and just run through that really quickly. So this looks a bit more relaxed, especially with the curvature uh, of the main face here. By not having the offset through the middle. 
So we just roll back a bit. There's a few differences from the other construction. So in this case, I've only revolved this section of the outside chamfer because the surface and the insides, uh, I don't want that sort of revolved section. So again, I've trimmed this back and I've created an inner profile. Again, much in the same way. Pretty sketch intersecting with my chamfer height offset. Then I've created the chamfer surfaces. Knit that together, mirrored it over, and I've created an arc in the middle here. Because we're going to build this surface out to be a larger one rather than two separate surfaces. So I've got my center line profile. In this case, the center line profile, I have made these two uh, sections of the control polygon segment collinear. So basically, the curvature comes to zero at the center line here. And then you can drag these around to change how the how much this uh, the curvature ramps up on this end. So if you have the curvature being fairly flat through here, it gets it gets a bit weird. Uh, around the end here, but flat on the final surface. Okay, so I knitted those together, and then pretty much this is all the same as the other one. I've trimmed that out, except in this case, I have used a fill surface on this end because I couldn't quite get a, a great result here, and I didn't want to spend a huge amount of time tweaking things. So uh, it's a four sided fill surface, but I've got optimized surface switched off. Okay, and that gives us this result here, which isn't too bad. And then, just like the other model, mirrored it over and thickened things. There we go. And just to show that this can handle a few alterations, we'll change the path. Make the path tighter. Rebuild. Okay, so that's updated. No problem there. And let's change the section, make that tighter as well. Thirty-five instead of fifty. And just have a look in here and see what happens. Okay, so that's updated. So seems to be fairly robust. Um you just gotta figure out what you want. Anyway, I'm going to wrap that up. Just a short video from me today. I'll be back with some more lozenge stuff next time I'm quiet with work. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.